Greetings, energetic viewers, and welcome to Healthy Living. Today on our show, we are honored to introduce the esteemed T. Colin Campbell, Ph.D., a pioneer of nutritional research, a professor emeritus of nutritional biochemistry at Cornell University in the United States, Dr. Campbell has spent over 40 years researching, teaching, and developing diets to optimize nutrition and health. Dr. Campbell received his master's degree and Ph.D. from Cornell and served as a research associate at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, or MIT. He has served on several grant review panels of multiple funding agencies, lectured extensively, and has authored more than 300 research papers. His original research, both in laboratory experiments and in large-scale human studies, has brought him recognition as recipients of several awards, both in research and citizenship. Dr. Campbell is also the project director of the China Oxford Cornell Diet and Health Project, which eventually became known as the China Study, considered the most comprehensive study on the role of diet, disease, and health to have ever been conducted. In 2004, he and his son Tom co-authored the book, The China Study, which summarized his career's worth of research on nutrition, which concludes that a pure vegan diet is the most optimal for health. Dr. Campbell continues to actively participate in the development of national and international nutrition policy. Today's show is the first of a two-part series on healthy living featuring Dr. T. Colin Campbell and his research findings on the benefits of a plant-based diet. My personal beginning uh, was from the dairy farm. I was milking cows, typical American boy, I suppose. And um, I sort of superficially thought the American diet was the best diet there was. Uh, and then I went to graduate school at Cornell University and did my doctoral dissertation along those same lines. Uh, in many ways, uh, it was a dissertation research that was intended to promote the consumption of animal-based foods, dairy, meat, eggs, milk, and uh, it was specifically focused on protein in the early 60s, middle 60s. I had an opportunity to work in the Philippines with uh, a rather distinguished man uh, who had been in the business a long time in nutrition. Um, and so he and I were in the Philippines arranging for setting up a nationwide program or of feeding malnourished children. And in those days, uh, the view was that these children who are malnourished in poor countries are, nutritionally speaking, either deficient in one of two things. Either they don't get enough calories or they don't get enough protein. I learned, uh, actually, on the golf course, playing golf one day, uh, from my uh, Philippine counterpart, a medical doctor, that children who are age four and under sometimes were susceptible to getting liver cancer, which was very unusual because liver cancer tends to occur in middle to older age people. And I started asking around and learned that these children who were likely getting liver cancer were from families who were the quote-unquote best fed. They were consuming the most protein. Typical Western diet, they were the richer families. At about this time, Dr. Campbell found a study from India also showing a connection between consuming higher levels of animal proteins and liver cancer. When he returned to the United States, he obtained funding from the National Institutes of Health for a 27-year study that focused on the correlation between protein consumption and cancer development. We also did some work to show the protein we were using was animal-based. It was the main protein of cow's milk, and that made it really kind of tricky and kind of difficult for me. I'm coming from the dairy farm, right, right. and here the protein of cow's milk is a problem. Uh, so then we compared it with a couple of plant proteins. Plant proteins didn't do that. Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden it was pointing away to animal-based pro protein. Could be a problem, but maybe plant protein would not be. When Healthy Living returns, we will learn about the China study, which shows how high cancer and disease rates are tied to consuming animal foods. Please keep your dial tuned here to Supreme Master Television. Welcome back to Healthy Living on Supreme Master Television, featuring renowned author of the China Study, Dr. T. Colin Campbell. 
In the 1980s, Dr. Campbell led the China study, the most comprehensive research project on the role of diet and disease. First, I should tell you what the China study is. Um, the Chinese in the 1970s had established that cancer was very common in some areas of China and not in others. There were big differences. And so they surveyed uh, how much cancer existed for about two dozen different kinds of cancers uh, all across China. They published those results in the early 1980s. And so because of these big differences, and also because the people in these different regions tended to live in the same places most of their lives, mm -hmm. it was a perfect setting to do a study, to go there and find out. Greetings, energetic viewers, and welcome to Healthy Living. Today on our show, we are honored to introduce the esteemed T. Colin Campbell, Ph.D., a pioneer in nutritional research. A professor emeritus of nutritional biochemistry at Cornell University in the United States, Dr. Campbell has spent over 40 years researching, teaching, and developing diets to optimize nutrition and health. Dr. Campbell received his master's degree and Ph.D. from Cornell and served as a research associate at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, or MIT. He has served on several grant review panels of multiple funding agencies, lectured extensively, and has authored more than 300 research papers. His original research, both in the laboratory and with large human populations, has brought him recognition with awards for both research and citizenship. Dr. Campbell is also the project director of the China-Oxford Cornell Diet and Health Project, which eventually became known as the China Study, considered the most comprehensive analysis of the role of diet, disease, and health ever conducted. In 2004, Dr. Campbell and his son Tom co-authored the book, The China Study which summarizes his career's worth of research in nutrition and concludes that a pure vegan diet is optimal for human health. Dr. Campbell continues to actively participate in the development of national and international nutrition policies. Today's show is the second in a three-part series on healthy living featuring Dr. T. Colin Campbell and his research on the benefits of a plant-based diet. Do we really need a lot of protein in our diet? And does a vegetarian diet provide all the vital nutrients that our bodies require? What we're now saying, at least what my research is showing, is that excessive amounts of protein, if we start consuming protein in excess of what we need, cholesterol levels in our blood starts to rise. Atherogenic uh, lesions that lead to heart disease starts to increase. We get an acidity that then pulls calcium from the bones. We, we, get, we start growing cancers. And so the question is, we can't consume excess protein. The question then becomes, what's excess? Well, the amount of protein we need is about 8 to 10 percent of total calories. Most of us, 95 percent of us in our society, consume somewhere in considerably in excess of that. We consume between about 11 and 25 percent or so. And so we put ourselves at risk by doing that. And uh, plant-based foods, a good plant-based diet, vegetables, fruits, grains, has just about 8 to 10 percent protein. It's, it's, I mean, nature almost made it so that it was ideal. A key finding in both the China Project and Dr. Campbell's research is that excess animal protein is a potent trigger for cancer growth and other diseases. In addition, in the case of breast cancer, he recognizes the role of excess estrogen, which also arises from animal proteins and milk in particular. Well, what are the factors that lead to breast cancer, and how can a plant-based diet reduce those risks? Breast cancer is, uh, like other cancers and other diseases, very complex from a biological perspective. And unfortunately, over the years, we've studied that uh, various factors that might be related in isolation. So we've learned some things, you know. And, and but uh, it's quite controversial and debatable if people focus on these individual studies and individual entities. When, however, you put all this together in a more holistic kind of interpretation and look at things collectively, it becomes quite clear to me that breast cancer is a disease of the West. Uh, that's been noted by many people. Breast cancer begins to emerge as we start consuming more animal-based foods, especially dairy. Dairy food uh, has certain characteristics with it. 
that uh, when especially young people, in this case uh, young girls, are consuming dairy, for example, to hopefully to get stronger bones and teeth and grow faster, as the ads have indicated, they actually then reach age of medical reproductive lives earlier. Boys, I'm sure, do the same thing, but we know we have better data for girls. So they reach age of medical earlier, their circulating estrogen levels are higher, they remain high as long as they consume that kind of diet, they stop the reproductive life later, they have a longer period, more estrogen exposure, all in large measure related to the kind of diet they're consuming. So I would argue that uh, as far as food is concerned, uh, animal food is a problem, especially dairy food. I, I think we should just simply not be feeding dairy food to our young people and all older people either. Plant food also has a protective effect. We know the dietary fiber and certain other phytochemicals and things like this in plant foods, we know that they also tend to repress you know, the growth of cancer or cells that would behave like breast cancer cells. So it means being a total vegan, essentially, you know, to really uh, get to the lowest possible risk for breast cancer. Dr. Campbell explains that the main reason modern physicians and society at large are unaware of the profound benefits of a plant-based diet is the tendency to study aspects of health in isolation. Science itself in medicine is focused on reducing things down to its, to its details and then attempting to take these details of individual chemicals or individual nutrients or individual diseases or individuals. I mean, they, they really focus, focus, focus. And that, to me, is not really what medicine should be. That's not health. Health, and particularly nutrition, is um, a condition that is very holistic, comprehensive effects. I, I'm a biochemist by training. And if you could sort of crawl inside the cell, which I feel like I, I can do from time to time, you start looking at all these reactions. And it's like a symphony. It's like a beautiful symphony. You know, countless things are coming together to actually create a kind of dynamic, a highly integrated dynamic that leads to health if we give it the right resources. If we give it the wrong resources, we don't, we don't get that. It's, it's, uh, it's really quite a beautiful story. When Healthy Living returns, we will learn about how when the body is given good plant-based nutrition, it not only begins to recover, but good nutrition can prevent our genes from expressing negative genetic tendencies such as disease. Be sure to stay tuned to Supreme Master Television. Greetings, energetic viewers, and welcome to Healthy Living. Today on our show, we are honored to introduce the esteemed T. Colin Campbell, Ph.D., a pioneer in nutritional research. A professor emeritus of nutritional biochemistry at Cornell University in the United States, Dr. Campbell has spent over 40 years researching, teaching, and developing diets to optimize nutrition and health. Dr. Campbell received his master's degree and Ph.D. from Cornell and served as a research associate at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, or MIT. He has served on several grant review panels of multiple funding agencies, lectured extensively, and has authored more than 300 research papers. His original research, both in the laboratory and with large human populations, has brought him recognition with awards for both research and citizenship. Dr. Campbell is also the project director of the China Oxford Cornell Diet and Health Project, which eventually became known as the China Study, considered the most comprehensive analysis of the role of diet, disease, and health ever conducted. In 2004, Dr. Campbell and his son Tom co-authored the book, The China Study, which summarizes his career's worth of research in nutrition and concludes that a pure vegan diet is optimal for human health. Dr. Campbell continues to actively participate in the development of national and international nutrition policies. Today's show is the third in a three-part series on healthy living featuring Dr. T. Colin Campbell and his research on the benefits of a plant-based diet. Ensuring that people have adequate access to health care is an important foundation for the prosperity and well-being of a country, company, institution, town, or family. 
In the United States, where people receive health insurance through their employer, this benefit has become extremely expensive for corporations to continue to offer, and many now are no longer providing coverage to their employees. Dr. Campbell believes the widespread adoption of a vegan diet to be the most effective way to lower health care costs. Even though it's been now three and a half years since our book came out, all of a sudden now things might begin to change in this way. The cost of health care in this country right. is serious. Yes. And so what does that do? That that's causing jobs to be loose because you know the companies can't afford the health care. Mm -hmm. It's having an impact on school budgets. Then they gotta cut programs. Right. And so, you know, a lot of people are now beginning to know this. I'm having some very interesting discussions with some very significant people in this country right now. Mm -hmm. but all of them only talk about who's going to pay the bill. Is it going to be the insurance company? Is it going to be the individual? Really, none of them are talking about how to make people well. They talk about prevention a little bit. They'll use the word prevention. But that word prevention, to me, is very superficial. They often, you know, say, stop smoking. Well, of course, you stop smoking. Exercise. Put your seat belts on. You know, exercise. Eat a good diet. That's what they say, eat a good diet. No one knows what a good diet really is. Dr. Campbell has launched the T. Colin Campbell Foundation to provide information to medical professionals and individuals seeking a better understanding of the role the plant-based diet plays in maintaining the highest level of health. Through Cornell University, the foundation offers accredited online courses that expand on his book, The China Study. The coursework provides a basic understanding of nutrition and explains how certain diseases such as cancer, diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and obesity are the direct result of the consumption of animal-based and processed foods. The course also provides practical advice on implementing a healthful plant-based diet. Another exciting feature of the foundation is its online social network where many people who have successfully overcome deadly diseases through plant-based diets share their inspiring stories and experiences and provide support to an ever-growing community seeking to do the same. There's nothing else in medicine that comes close to this in my estimations. Uh, I've already had three physicians come up and tell me that you know they're, they're getting their patients to do this. One of them he just he's bought about 90 books and he gives them out to all his patients and so he asked him to fill out all the forms what they think of it uh -huh. and the reaction was really impressive and so I'm really confident that this needs to be the future of medicine mm -hmm. it needs to be uh, broadcast and told to the public right. and someday it can save health care costs in a few moments, we will hear more from Dr. Campbell on how a vegan diet can have a beneficial effect on mitigating the global warming crisis that is occurring on our planet. You are watching Healthy Living on Supreme Master Television. Welcome back to Healthy Living for our program featuring the esteemed Dr. T. Colin Campbell, a professor emeritus of nutritional biochemistry at Cornell University in the United States and the co-author of the acclaimed book, The China Study. In addition to recommending a vegan diet for optimal health, Dr. Campbell recognizes that it is a critical component in reducing global warming. The United Nations Food and Agricultural Organization has stated in a report, Meat Production